All right, joining me now here on the Matthew Filipovich Show is Shenna Bellows. Shenna is the former executive director of the ACLU of Maine, and she is currently running to unseat Susan Collins for the U.S. Senate in the state of Maine. You can find her at bellowsforsenate.com and on Twitter at Shenna Bellows. Shenna, thank you so much for being on the show. It's a pleasure. All right, so Shanna, let's actually begin today by talking about your time at the ACLU. As someone who really does care about uh, civil liberties, uh, it really is exciting to see someone like you actually running for Senate. What initially brought you to the ACLU? I started out as an anti-Patriot Act organizer back in 2003. The ACLU realized that the courts were becoming increasingly conservative and that we needed to have a nationwide organizing team to bring issues uh, to public attention and try to pressure uh, Congress to do the right thing. And so I was hired. I was one of a team of four, and we were working on a resolutions campaign all across the country to educate the public about the Patriot Act and work with unusual coalition partners uh, from the American Library Association to Gun Owners of America uh, to form a coalition to try to fix the Patriot Act to bring it back in line with the Constitution. It's a shame uh, that that those reforms have never happened. That's really, you know, one of the major disappointments, I think, for a lot of progressives and is seeing uh, President Obama be elected and then a lot of these uh, horrible civil liberties and privacy abuses continue under his administration. You've been very outspoken about uh, a lot of the NSA revelations. Uh, talk a little bit about, about your opinion of, of, of what we found out from the NSA and what needs to be done to, to change it. Well, I think what we found out is that our worst fears were actually realized. So back in 2003, when I first began to work um, on the Patriot Act, we were successful in making the Patriot Act a household word. And we were warning people that provisions like Section 215, the so-called business records or library records provision, would really open the door to surveillance agencies scooping up incredible amounts of data um, on ordinary Americans. And in fact, that's exactly what happened. Uh, What we've learned is that the NSA um, has been, has really intruded on our privacy, that they have been collecting um, an enormous amount of data, including Uh, the metadata information about who we're contacting and when and why and how frequently, um, but also content communications as well. And then, of course, last week, we just learned that uh, this Heartbleed bug, um, a bug in software that is putting all of our security, online security at risk, uh, was something that the NSA may have known about and exploited uh, for as long as two years. So I think what we've seen is that the NSA is really... Um, gone too far in abusing uh, the powers that were first granted to them under the Patriot Act and then expanded by this Congress over the last decade. So talk a little bit about, because I, 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 I think a lot of a lot of people are frustrated with the lack of oversight when it's come from from the Senate and from the House when it comes to the intelligence community and a lot of people would think that 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 congress has you know not done its job and actually really being a check on on this authority describe what what the senate and the house and again if you if you were elected to be elected to the senate what the what should the senate be doing when it comes to its oversight of of the intelligence community i think what the senate really suffers from and and the congress has suffered from is <laughs> the symptoms of trust us, we're the government, we know it's best. So <laughs> my opponent, Republican Susan Collins, sits on the Senate Intelligence Committee. And presumably, the Senate Intelligence Committee has had access to information about the nature and extent of these abuses of power. And yet, they have failed to back robust reforms to restore constitutional protections. And there's some, there's some really important legislation um, in the Congress right now. For example, the USA Freedom Act, uh, backed by James Sensenbrenner, who was actually an author of the Patriot Act, and Patrick Leahy, Democrat from Vermont, on the Senate side. Um, that's the type of reform that we need. But what we have seen is that too many members of Congress are long on rhetoric. Uh, they wring their hands and talk about uh, abuse of power, but short on action, uh, failing to sign on as co-sponsors to the USA Freedom Act, failing to 
enact meaningful checks and balances and instead rubber stamping the Patriot Act every time it comes up for renewal. Well, when you even look at not even necessarily just the uh, the NSA, but we also had in the recent month or so the revelations that came out of the CIA torture report and the fact that the CIA clearly misled the Senate. I mean, what what is the I mean, to me, charges should be filed. And, and I mean, obviously, uh, uh, James Clapper lied to to the Senate about uh, ab- about the NSA spying and about bulk collection. Shouldn't there be? I mean, isn't is there more that the that the Senate should be doing to actually try to ex, ex, exact consequences when these intelligence officials blatantly lie to the 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 body that's charged with over uh, their oversight? You know, it's very concerning to have the executive branch actively misleading uh, the Congress and the. When when it came out that the CIA had actually been monitoring some of the computers of the Senate Intelligence Committee, I think that that sent shockwaves even through Washington. You know, Senator Dianne Feinstein, who has been a supporter of many of the NSA spying programs, came out very forcefully saying this is unacceptable as a separation of powers issue. I do think that individuals need to be held accountable, and members of Congress could pressure the president to remove from office. Um, any uh, official who's actively misleading the Congress. But I think that there's a larger problem, and that is the issue of policy. So Congress has not uh, fulfilled its duties in putting in place proper checks and balances on the CIA, on the FBI, and on the NSA. Instead, under Congress's watch, we've seen the growth of a surveillance industrial complex, a really vast network of surveillance authorities um, who are really intruding on our public, our private lives in numerous ways. And the other thing that I think we need is we really need, uh, you know, after the abuses of the Nixon administration, um, Frank Church led the Church Committee, which did a thorough investigation looking into um, surveillance in our society and, uh, and issued a set of recommendations. I think we need a church-style uh, committee to do a full and fair investigation of surveillance in the wake of September 11th and how we can reinstate checks and balances, what abuses have occurred, and how do we make sure that we get back to our fundamental constitutional freedoms. So that's the type of oversight I think this Congress should enact. I also think, quite frankly, it's time to repeal the Patriot Act. Let's stop talking around the edges. Let's repeal the Patriot Act, and then let's Uh, end the NSA both data collection program. Let's place meaningful checks and balances uh, on these agencies and and move forward with an oversight investigation and a full reporting of everything that happened to the public. I am talking to Shenna Bellows, candidate for Senate in Maine. Again, Susan Collins, you can find her at bellowsforsenate.com and on Twitter at Shenna Bellows. And I, Shenna, I have to tell you, it's very, very refreshing to hear a, a, a Democrat, someone running for the Democratic uh, a Democratic seat actually say this stuff, because unfortunately, and I'm sure you, you know this, and like there are, you know, Ron Wyden has been, you know, blowing the whistle on this stuff and, and has been trying to talk about this a good deal. But when we have, you know, probably the, the biggest person who's at the forefront that people, when, when you talk about NSA, we people probably think of Rand Paul. And while Rand Paul is is correct on a lot of these issues, it's also very frustrating because Rand Paul is also kind of crazy on a lot of other issues. As, as if, if you're a progressive, Rand Paul is, it's not the person you'd like to see as the poster person for NSA reform. So it's actually really good to see uh, 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 someone who's running as a Democrat actually come out strong on this issue and making it one of the forefronts of your campaign. I also want to point out uh, something that you did very early on is that you've actually called Edward Snowden a whistleblower, uh, whereas you have a lot of other Democratic politicians, you know, saying he should be prosecuted under the Espionage Act. So I just want to—I'm I'm glad to actually see a, a someone who's running as a Democrat actually using the the stronger language when it comes to this type of thing. Well, thank you. And I do want to remind people that, you know, Democrat Senator Russ Feingold was the only senator to vote yeah, against the Patriot Act. To vote against Act. the Patriot Act, yeah. And so I do think that there is a strong tradition, a progressive tradition that favors civil liberties. And, you know, I want to applaud Ron Wyden, Jeff Merkley, Bernie Sanders, and others who have become very vocal 
um, proponents of restoring checks and balances. And as I mentioned before, Democrat Patrick Leahy um, introducing the USA Freedom Act, which is definitely much needed legislation. But I think you're right. Rand Paul has become the poster child for meaningful checks and balances. He's been very forceful in his advocacy. One of the things that I think is missing um, in Congress is bipartisanship has met, has come to mean the worst sort of compromise, sacrificing principles for political advantage and moving through with some measures that really, I think, set our country back and set our country on the wrong track. Instead, the bipartisanship that I learned at the ACLU was bipartisanship based on principle, bringing people together across difference around common values. And that's what's so exciting about civil liberties is you can bring together a Rand Paul and a Ron Wyden and put in place meaningful reforms. And that's how we're going to make change. It's the only way we'll make change. Uh, and with the gridlock in Washington, I think we need more Democrats willing to work with Rand Paul and more more Republicans um, willing to work with with me and, and Ron Wyden. And I think that we can do that. I think that's the type of coalition I look forward to building when I'm in the United States Senate.